We'll now move on to our third speaker, our final speaker, Alicia Jackafusi. Thanks, Alicia. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Oh, hello? Yep, we can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Sorry. Yep, all um, good. Oh, Go yep. ahead. So, hi, everyone. My name's Alicia. Um, so, with I'll just give you a quick background of my story of how it all happened. So, I was diagnosed with stage three ovarian cancer, both high and low grade, um, uh, in 2017, and I was 24 years old at the time. So I also had a massive surgery during that time, so which included a full hysterectomy, and half of my large bowel removed. And, and then throughout 2018, I had six rounds of chemotherapy, and once my chemotherapy finished, I went into remission around August 2018. Well, now, unfortunately, in um, April, March, April this year, I had a reoccurrence. So a lot has happened in the past, I would say, nearly three years, um, especially being a young woman. It's been quite challenging. Um, the two topics I'll be covering more personally for myself is um, the challenges that I face uh, self-esteem and sexuality but um, for now I'm just going to go over the challenges that I faced with self-esteem so when it came to self-esteem um, going through chemotherapy especially and having so much bits taken out of you especially having a full hysterectomy and all the scarring I struggled for a bit with my body image um, I would I, would, I used to say I would look into the mirror and everyone around me would be saying, oh, Alicia, you're still beautiful, you know, but I did not see that. All I saw was just cancer. Um, that is the best way I can explain it. And I struggled for a while, um, I guess, coming to terms with just my body, with how I felt, being confident um, within myself and it was hard also just being, at, I guess, at 24 at the time, having this disease, what do I do? I just I don't feel like how I used to feel. Cause I, uh, before my diagnosis, I was super confident, everything like that. I, I was living life, and now I just felt robbed. So um, what helped me was like just my body image, and just being confident within myself, just being a woman, um, I was to really embrace my journey. You know, I've, I've been given this insidious disease and I can either dwell on it or I can turn it into a positive. And it was really retraining my mind on how I thought about myself as a woman. Um, I really struggled with having the full hysterectomy later on throughout my diagnosis and that was not being able to have kids which really it, yeah it, it, it my that that really brought me down um so having not being able to have kids um i that did not help with my confidence whatsoever so it was really just embracing the journey um, having ovarian cancer because obviously I, there's nothing much I can do but was to keep living. Um, they're the challenges that I faced with my self-esteem and accepting my scars and showing it. Um, there was a time where I came quite depressed. So with what helped me was actually dressing up, especially during my chemo and even after my diagnosis, was dressing up and really putting um, effort into my parents, like putting on makeup because I felt like, well, I'm just stuck at home in my pajamas. That's all I'm doing. So if I just dress up, put on some makeup, look in the mirror, own it, go out, enjoy life, um, which was really helped me personally was going out and socializing, um, even just going out for a few drinks with friends and also turning to my support network, such as my family and my girlfriend, which is what really helped. Um, and also, you know, uh, yeah, uh, 
for me to overcome all of that was really embracing my journey and, and being open about it. Um, I know some people, some women, are, are they can't do that, and that's fine. But for me, it's just being open and sharing it on social media and then meeting other women who have ovarian cancer and being able to talk about it and having someone to talk to who understands what you're going through is what helped my self-esteem. And especially being a young woman and seeing, you know, all the other ladies who are around my age, I struggled with that. But I was able to come through and talk about it. And, yeah, just being open and sharing, uh, you know, my challenges. And what helped me was just going to the gym, changing my um, the way I eat is what helped me. And, yeah, so that was my self-esteem, was just pretty much owning and embracing and just feeling beautiful is what helped me get through my challenges. Um, but um, now I'm going to talk about with the sexuality side. Um, I do get asked quite a lot of, you know, what was se- what is sexuality, sexuality like of having, like when you, when you have cancer, um, ovarian cancer. Beforehand, uh, before my diagnosis, I was fine with my sexuality. Um, I was quite confident in everything, even like just having sex. I was fine. I, I, even talking to men and and all of that, I was okay. But um, once after my diagnosis and my doctors did say um, that, you know, with your surgery that you've had, your full hysterectomy, obviously you have no hormones, which does affect your sex life and also your emotions and how you feel and all of that. So um, during, for like, uh, for a while, uh, I was still able to talk to men, um, and and but I was more worried about will a man, I guess, find me attractive as in love me for with everything that I have going on. Like I've got so much going on and also not being able to have kids. Um, And I struggled with that, which I mentioned before. So with sexuality and also um, I wasn't confident in having sex. Um, As a single woman, I was too scared to have sex just because of what I was told and also my sexual desire. I had lacked in my sexual desire. I just did not feel it at all and not wanting to do it. So despite with what all was going on during this time and worried about what it would be like going into a new relationship, which fortunately did happen. I was I met a lovely man who is, currently lives in America and we've been in a relationship for about two years. Um, we are actually currently in a situation where we aren't able to be physically together, um, yet to practically have sex or have that physical intimacy, but just being able to be with someone who understands and I feel comfortable about talking or talking to about everything um, is what helps with my sexual desires and he understands um, but unfortunately, yes, we cannot be physically together. And just what um, the lovely doctor who had spoke before me, it's not just about sex. It's also about intimacy and having that connection. And I wasn't sure when I was single, will I be able to have that connection, not just sexual or physical, but also emotionally, which I do currently have with my partner. Um, so he has helped me with my sexuality, my sexual desires, I actually currently use a sex toy, um, which helps with my sexual desires, I guess, to increase my sexual desires, as that's how I can call it. As I did say, during my single days, I did lack in it. And I think it's just because I just did not know what it would have been like being a single woman, I guess, having ovarian cancer and being able to be with a man. Um, so, yes, it was really just having someone now who I can just talk to and who I like to be transparent with and and t- 
detail everything too. So, yeah, those are the challenges I really faced for myself was my sexuality, but my big one was my self-esteem. It, having ovarian cancer, it, it just robbed everything out of me and I faced so many challenges, not just from body image, but for how I feel about being a woman and I felt less of a woman because I had the full hysterectomy. But it was just coming to terms and accepting my journey and saying, you know, this is it. I either dwell on it or, like I said, I keep on pushing. And I chose to keep on pushing. I do have my days, and I'm currently going through chemo at the moment. And we all have have our days, and I have my days, but I'm here. I'm able to talk about my experiences like I am right now, which I'm very thankful. So, yes, those are the challenges I faced. I hope that was covered in everything, but thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you so much, Alicia. That was fantastic. And like you said, just getting up and speaking about, you know, your diagnosis and your story and your sexuality, that that takes a lot of courage, especially for someone so young. So I really, really appreciate it. And I know everyone on this webinar um, would agree with me. You know, you're so open and honest. Um, We just do do have one question that has been um, posted. Have you told um, your partner about your diagnosis? And, And if so, how did you bring it up? Yes, I did. Um, he pretty much knew straight away. I just said, look, I've got, this is my story. And I told him everything about it. I just, you know, I've got stage three ovarian cancer. And yeah, I was just so upfront because at that point, it's either, you know, you either take all of me or you don't. So. I pretty much told him over the phone that, yeah, I've got cancer and this is my story. And it, and obviously, yeah. two years later, we are still together. So, yes, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Right. Thank you Sorry. so much again, Alyssa. Really, really appreciate your time. And um, like I said, just being so open and honest and sharing your story. Um, so there's no more questions for now. So once again, I would like to say um, a big thank you to our speakers, um, Chantel Otten, Dr. Janine Porter, um, Steele and Alyssa uh, Jack Kofusi, we really appreciate the information that you've shared um, and the time that you've given us this evening. Thank you everyone for being on the webinar and we really hope that you found it valuable. You will receive an email uh, with a link to the recording of this webinar in the next few days and it will also be posted on the Ovarian Cancer Australia website in the next couple of weeks. In a moment you'll be directed to an evaluation form. It's very, very brief, but if you could just take a moment to fill that in um, because your feedback is very important to us. It helps us to plan and develop future webinars. So if you have any other questions that you would like addressed, please don't hesitate to contact our information and support line on 1300 660 334. This is obviously a very challenging time for everyone, um, more so with you know with what's going on around the world. We know some of you might feel that you need that extra support. So please don't hesitate to contact us. Um, Thanks again, everyone. And we hope to see you for our next webinar towards the end of the year. Please stay safe, stay well, and enjoy your evening. Goodbye.